feature tiny lights in HO scale vehicles, which are already pretty small. Um, I like to do animations on my railroad. I go back to the days of when my next door neighbor had a Lionel train set and we didn't have a train set around the Christmas tree, but he had a Lionel train set, half his basement, it had every operating accessory you could think of. You know, the dumpers and the water towers and the uh, log loaders and he had everything. So when I built my railroad, my first railroad was in New York, uh, I thought it'd be cool to have a lot of these things and I've created some of them. Um, but one of the things that I learned when, uh, in New York was at the West Island Club, a fellow named um, uh, Jerry, no, not Jerry. I'll think of it in a minute, but there's a really nice guy down there who taught me how to do this technique. And basically you're using these little tiny lights um, with a certain type of circuit because they can only take a certain voltage and to animate your, your layout and to put headlights in the vehicles, I think is really, really cool. So I'm gonna try and move this. So this is one scene I built. Um, and I have a lot of Jordan vehicles, which are very fragile. But I also have some, some pre-assembled, uh, ready to run, let's say vehicles. And I've experimented based on what um, uh, Kenny, Kenny, Kenny was his name, um, what, he, what he taught me how to do. Um, this particular scene, I had some antique kits. And I think three or four of the vehicles in here were in one kit. So I got like four vehicles for $5. And I had them on the layout for a while and I, I thought they were a little flimsy, but I started experimenting and I, after, I've done about 90 of them. I was able to figure out how to do this. This actually is a diner. I had a friend of mine down here. His name was Stan Brother. And he gave me some equipment when he got out of, um, he, he, got, he couldn't move too much anymore. He, he got out of, so he gave me some of his equipment. And one of the things he said, he gave me the track for this area. And one of the things he says, I want you to build a Lindy's Diner, because that's where Linda, his wife, and I met on Long Island. So this is just dedicated to Stan Brother. He's, he's passed on by now. He's a really uh, nice guy. He was a Marine. He was in Korea. Anyway, but that's, the, that's why Lindy's Diner is there. And this is a part of the area called Flushing. It's the room uh, in my basement where I have a toilet. So the town's called Flushing. So anyway, so this is some of the things you can do. Uh, this is a Jordan Beagle, very fragile, but I was able to put that in. Um, this was, uh, some of these kits, some of these were not kits, they were already built. So that's just one scene. Uh, the lights here, I think are a little bright. All right, now this is another scene. This is the town of Bethany, named after my daughter, Bethany. And here you have vehicles with, uh, Headlights, you have some vehicles with taillights. You can, you can put taillights in and headlights in, but it's kind of a lot of trouble if you're not going to see both lights. If the vehicle's facing into a wall, you probably just want to put in taillights. Uh, if the vehicle's like this one here, this is, a little, this is a really, really easy one. I'll show you how to put this one in. It's a milk wagon. Um, you can put headlights and taillights in. And this is, this is the town of Bethany. Interestingly enough, this whole section, which goes all the way on here, was already on my railroad in New York. And I managed to save the whole section and bring it down to Virginia when I built the railroad in Virginia. So this is kind of what, it's not really great photography, but this is one of the things I think really adds to your, to your uh, layout. So what do you use? I like to use incandescent mighty lights from Circuitron, right? These are, uh, up to 1.5 volts. And this is how small the bulb is. It's just the perfect size to sim simulate a he the headlight of an HO scale vehicle. And it could be a modern vehicle. It could be anything back to the days, you know, when they first had headlights. So um, what you can do is, if you don't want to keep things simple, you can put a resistor in this is a voltage dropping resistors that come from Mighty Lights, but you gotta put one resistor on each bulb, right? I thought this is a really tedious way to go. I wanted to make you know lots and lots of vehicle lights, but if you just wanna do one, 
It's the simplest way you can hook. Then you can hook this up to your 12 volt system, right? Um, nothing special, very tedious. So what I do is I, okay, so this is that milk wagon that you saw. This is a really simple vehicle to take apart. I think there's two screws on the bottom and you can run your wires. I'll show you that a little later. <clears throat> I think this vehicle is a couple of dollars. It's not expensive. Uh, I didn't do anything to weather it or paint it or anything uh, yet. And obviously the wires all go through holes in your layout. So you gotta be pretty, pretty sure that that's where you want it. Well, generally what I do is if I get a new vehicle, I play around with it, I move it at different spots before I decide to wire it, because it's gonna be there. You know, the wires are gonna go under the layout. Um, this is a really uh, nice one, although the bulb is a little bit <laughs> sticking out too much in this one. This is a Cadillac, I think. I think it's a Cadillac convertible. And I wired this one with headlamps and taillights because it's in the foreground and you're gonna see, you're gonna see all the lights. So let's see. This is a really interesting one. I can't remember who makes this, but uh, this is a cab. In, it's in my era. I like to do the 20s, 30s, and 40s all steam on my road. So this is in the era. era. Um, I've actually done some of these with headlights and taillights. And I'll, I think the next thing is, yeah. So to take this apart, this has to be taken apart. It's not hard to do. It's a frame, right? And you can sort of see uh, what you'd have to do you'd have to turn this over. Whoops. Okay, so this is when this is the whole thing apart. There's two screws. That's the wheels and sets, front bumper, rear bumper, uh, floorboard, and the cap. So all the lights are going to be in this frame. And you've got this is not too hard to do. It's, it's many steps, but. You've got to, um, I'm trying to do this with the mouse. Normally, I normally do it with the up and down, but it's not working. Okay. So you want to get those, wire, the bulb inside from this way, right? And the way to do that is, what is this really driving me crazy? Oh, okay. So here's your frame, right? You take a number, I think it's a number 56 drill in a, uh, pin vise, and you go from inside, right? And you're going to be drilling out this plastic headlight that's there already, right? And I would usually take a really small bit and then do a little bigger bit until I get a big enough hole to slip the wire in that. Oh, wait a minute, here we go. Here's, here's what I can do this eight or nine. Okay, much better. I'm kind of slow on the pickup, but anyway, so. So here's your parts, right? That's the frame again. That's that's how you drill it, right? Just for the headlamp. You can try and drill the tail light out too. This is a little more tedious. You, you might end up cutting, you know, cutting this apart, and then your tail light bulb is going to go in here because this is really, really tiny. All right. Go drill that out real careful. That's the part. Now you're going to stick your wires in, right? And they're going to, the bulbs are going to go all the way up to here, let's say, with the drop of CA. Right? I mean, I guess you could use testers or something, but the CA works really good, really fast. All right? Next step. All right? Now you try them, you check them with the battery. Always, you're going to, every time you put a bulb in, you want to check it with a battery to make sure you haven't damaged the bulb. These bulbs are really, really tiny, right? Also, I don't know if I show that later on. Let me see. Oh, God. Okay. I would suggest at this point, once you put a bulb in, actually, before you even put the bulbs in, I would take the, a bunch of bulbs and I would put some red marker or red paint on one lead of each bulb. This way, when you get them out and ganged, you'll know that this is one from one side and one from the other side. It's especially a problem if you put in taillights. Now you've got eight wires coming out, you know, which is the positives, which is the negatives. So if you put a red 
red marker or something like that on the end of the wire, then you can gang the red wires together, you can gang the unread uh, wire, black wires together, and then you, you'll get your power will be, will be straight. Um, everybody following me? You don't want to stick a bunch of bulbs in and have, all, and have eight wires and not which ones to which bulb. So if you do that first. So here's some other vehicles that I've done. This was uh, one of those kits that I told you I got like four for $5. Um, this is, I can't remember what that one is. And this is a taxi cab again, right? Oh, it's a pickup truck. So the way I do the pickup truck is I drill a hole in the fender here, right? And I run my wire up and glue it to the side of the, of the fender. Um, but first, what you wanna do is you wanna take your bulb and you put two millimeter heat shrink tubing on that, right? It's a really small section of two millimeter heat shrink tubing. And this is gonna simulate your headlamp casing, right? I'm sorry, I'm going back and forth here because I'm, okay, that's right, that's what I'm gonna do. So just for the pickup truck, and the wire is gonna show, I'm pointing with my finger, it's not working. So the wire is gonna show, but with a black pickup truck, it doesn't really show up that, it's not really that obvious. And you've gotta be really careful when you shrink these, right? This is me with the, uh, they call like a like a charcoal lighter, right? And here's your heat shrink being shrunk, but the flame has to be really a distance, or you're gonna set the whole thing on fire, right? Right? Two millimeter heat shrink tubing, right? So now you've got something that looks sort of like a headlamp. Right? Now with this one, this was a little more difficult. This one. I was able to take the whole front um, radiator grill with the headlights attached off of the vehicle, drill that out. And this, these particular headlamps were big enough that the bulb and a little bit of the heat shrink tubing fit in, right? So then I just had to put that back together. So that's the, that's the assembled one before I did anything. Right, so this whole part just pries off. Or if you're building it, if it's a kit, you do that before you build it, okay? Okay, again, you're testing with a battery before you put the whole thing back together again. Uh, I don't know why that's there, okay. So this is the pickup truck, this is the taxi, and this is, I think it's a Stutz Bearcat or something like that. Now, I had a lot of trouble figuring out power supplies. I used to be able to buy 1.5 volt power supplies from Radio Shack. And I used to have, they used to have some that were switchable. You could throw a little switch and it would be 1.5 or it'd be three or six volts or whatever. First of all, I can't find them anymore. Radio Shack is almost non-existent. And when I would test them with a the voltmeter, <clears throat> they weren't that accurate. You could put the switch on 1.5 volts, and it could be two, it could be one, it could be three volts. It's very important with these tiny bulbs, you don't exceed 1.5 volts. You burn them out quick. So I looked and looked, I could not find anything that was reliable. So I ended up building this uh, power supply. I don't know if I, okay. So that's what it looks like connected. This is, I tried using different types of power sources. So this is a regular standard DC spectrum power pack. There was just no way I could get it to be set at less than 1.5 volts. I would set it to what I thought was 1.5 volts and the meter would jump around up to between 1.4 to 1.6 to 1.7 to 1.4. It was just, it just breathing on it. So that wasn't a viable option. Um, so I ended up building these. I went on the internet and I found a circuit and it, it's really, really simple. Um, I'll get into it later, but all it is is a capacitor, a fuse, of course, a um, 
diode, a voltage regular, and two resistors. It looks crazy, but the beauty of this thing is whatever you put in, you can put anything in. You can put any kind of voltage in. You can put from 16 to 24. The voltage regulator here minimize, cuts, cuts the voltage down to 1.5 volts. I built eight of these and I've measured them and the voltage is always between 1.47 and 1. Point, oh, what am I doing? 1.47 and 1.5 volts. So I write that on the, the board. It's just a four by six inch piece of plywood. The hardest part is this little uh, voltage regulator. And I don't know if you want to, that's what, it, that's what it looks like in real life on my screen, right? So it's, it's really, really simple. And it's um, uh, what's the word? voltage dependent. So you're in here, you, you're hooking up a, uh, I can't do it, sorry, sorry for the confusion here. So you're hooking up some kind of wall wart. It can be from five volts to 20 volts. You measure that with your voltmeter, but it, it's polarity dependent, right? You put it in one way, you put this in one way, you'll get 1.5 volts out. You switch these wires, you'll get nothing out. Sorry, my mouse is so screwy. Okay. No. Well, okay. Get back here. Okay. So in here, and, and I've got a presentation I can email you, is the parts, the parts for to do this. It's a resistor, a voltage regulator, a capacitor, a diode, and this particular one, I don't have a fuse in. I definitely recommend you have a fuse in the line, right? You don't want to start a fire if something was wrong here. I had to do this because I could not find reliable 1.5 voltage power sources. Now, if you're only going to equip a vehicle or two, you don't need this. You can hook up a battery, right? I've done uh, up to four vehicles with a double uh, A battery. I'm guessing if you hook it up to a, a D cell, maybe you could do more vehicles. Um, I haven't tried that, but this is simple enough to do. And you know, you know how it is. You go to buy one of these, you can't buy one. You gotta buy six, right? Stupid mouse, stupid mouse. Okay, so, and you wanna buy a resistor? You can't buy one resistor, you gotta buy six. Same thing with capacitors. But so I was, I was making a dozen of these. So if, if this was uh, six for six dollars and this was, uh, you know, four for five dollars, whatever, resistors are cheap. I cannot read. I'm not one of those people I can look at a resistor and say, oh, this is so many ohms. I haven't got a clue how to do that. Yeah. So there's a resistor there, resistor there. Um, so just the simplest thing. And I've got, a, I've got a list on my presentation of which parts you get from where. Um, it's probably cost you if, you, if you're only gonna build one, you're gonna have a lot of extra parts. If you build a few of them, it's gonna end up costing you two dollars a piece, right? Now, everybody knows what this is, right? Wool wart, right? I collect these. These were what powered, back in the old days, when they first came out with cordless phones, you had a, a phone on a base and you could pick up the phone and walk around the house with it. Remember, remember those days, Jerry? <laughs> well, they didn't last that long. And then maybe you had an electric razor that had one of these chargers and maybe you had a, any kind of little appliance. I must have a hundred of these, all, di all different sizes. So I check them with a voltmeter and see what they're actually putting out. This will, it'll, it'll list that it's nine volts. But you actually check with a voltmeter what it's putting out, and then you write it on there with the magic marker, and then you know. You can use it for some other purpose. I use these all over. I use them to power areas of switch machines. I use them to power areas of building lights. <clears throat> really, really handy. So anytime there's an appliance that doesn't work and I throw it out, I save this part. Um, let's see, what's next? Okay, so we did that one. What I like to do for my wiring, uh, these are uh, terminal blocks and they're meant for wires, one wire here and go, uh, the wire to go out. I cut them in half 
and I make each one uh, uh, positive or negative. So every vehicle will have a wire that goes here and a wire that goes here. So here is, is going to your, uh, your power supply. And I do the same thing for lights with 12 volts or, or anything else. And then I usually label them so I know which wire is for which thing. Like uh, in the case of uh, structures, I'll say this one goes to the brewery, this one goes to the train station, this one goes to the a signal house, whatever. And then if something goes wrong, I know which wire to disconnect. These are, um, if, you, if you go to like Lowe's, like six bucks a piece, but you can send away overseas and get a dozen for $12. So that's what I end up doing. Now I never had one fail, but this under your layout, this is really handy. It makes a much more positive connection. I initially just ran a bus and I uh, stripped the wires and I ran some, you know, ran the wires over them. And eventually that loosens up, they corrode, you don't get a good, you don't get a good connection. So I that's that's my terminal block connection. Um, this is a little, another little scene. This is a chain gang working in Bethany. Um, I think it's kind of cool. This is one of those cases where you put a light in a building, the whole building glows. <laughs> so not a great, not a great structure lighting there, but um, this is an uh, area called uh, Skyler. And so this, this is how the vehicle lights, you know, here's, here's one, uh, why, I don't know why my mouse is so crazy, but so here's a vehicle point going inside the layout, but you can still see the front of it. So I have headlights and taillights. Um, this vehicle you can't see is a taxi. Uh, with, with vehicles, you don't want lights in everything. On your layout, some vehicles are just parked. I like to put, lights on vehicles that are on the road or maybe uh, dropping off something, but not everything has to have lights. That's just, that's not realistic to me. Um, this is another one in, um, which is, my wife's name is Eve. So this village is called Eveville. And this is a uh, open top, uh, this was not a kit. This was something I got pre-built. Oh, this is this is the uh, Cadillac at the crossing where the people have painted or something, right? Um, so I got headlights and taillights in this guy. This is the same scene. That's the same Cadillac, right? And this is a night si nighttime scene in Flushing at the tractor factory. So this particular this is an additional light here. Can't tell. This is a blinking light. So if you want to something, if you want a blinking effect, that's a whole separate little doobie walker that you put in, and it, it's, that that actually works on AC. So this vehicle has 1.5 volts for um, 1.5 volts for headlamp, one taillight, and it's got I think six volts or 12 volts AC just for this blinking light. That is a really cool effect. Uh, when you have visitors, uh, if you have a, 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 a vehicle waiting to make a turn and the light is blinking, um, but sep separate power, that's not going to work on 1.5 volts. Uh, this is another scene at the engine terminal at, um, uh, I forgot what it calls, uh, Essex Junction or something like that. This whole area is a removable module. And that area comes out and a circus goes in there for with a, a little circus train and um, carnival, carnival rides, uh, which, which I put in at Christmas time. So this whole section comes out and I have quick disconnects for the 1.5 volts, for the track voltage, for the 12 volt building, building lights. Um, and this is a two or three man operation to lift this up and get it over the road and put the, put the circus in. So this is the list of the, the parts list. It's not, it's not a lot. Um, 
like I said, two resistors, a voltage regulator, cap capacitor, and a diode. And the only thing I got from Radio Shack was the diode. Um, I've built about a dozen of these. Um, so far, no fires, but they all have fuses. So here's the, here's the circuitry, right? This can be any kind of uh, AC wall ward, right? Like I said, it could be six to 12 volts, right? Put a fuse in that line, right? Capacitor goes across here, the diodes here. This is the voltage regulator. It's a tiny little thing with the three little arms on it, right? Resistor, resistor, and then you got 1.5 volts out. Uh, and like I said, I built about a dozen of them. And uh, the voltage is never more than 1.47 volts and never more than 1.5 volts. Now, what happens when you start? Now, what happens, the more vehicles you add, the voltage is gonna drop at the end of the line. Um, I've done up to 20 vehicles, which is about, which is between 20 and 30 actual bulbs. <clears throat> and the voltage will drop to about 1.2 volts. That's about all you need. If it goes below 1.2, it's not, it's hard, kind of hard to see them. That's the voltage adjuster. And that black part there is about as big as your thumbnail. The hardest part is soldering these three, three things. And what I usually do is bend the middle one up. So I've got a little more clearance to do my, my soldering. Oh, I guess we don't. Okay. Um, so I thought I had another scene on here. Maybe not. Okay. So that's about it. That's this is one of my favorite scenes. Um, this was a whole other scene that I added on. I used to have a shop with my um, radio arm saw and my band saw and stuff like that in this area. And one day I said, I can put all this stuff up in the garage. I can have a whole new scene. So this is where this area of flushing came in. Uh, this was an original. Um, this is uh, Sophia and Skylar. Okay, people have asked me, why don't I use um, LEDs? And I've never really found an LED that was the, the right shape. The LEDs almost always have uh, like a block on the back of the light. So these bulbs are just, come back to the original here. These bulbs are just exactly the right shape. You can see how tiny they are. I think they're 1.2 millimeters diameter. They fit in almost, they fit in almost anything. Um, that's about it. It's, it's a pretty short presentation. Any questions? George, I, as you were speaking, I wrote down uh, about four questions here. Um, the first question I have is on the power pack, when you were do you have to have a power pack for each individual car or can you do run the power pack to a strip and then run it to each individual circuit system? Yeah, I run a bus. What I do is if you, if you uh, think about this, uh, let's see, this power supply, right? Uh -huh. I run a bus from here, mm -hmm. another railroad. And then I drop, I, I run, I run the bus to this uh, terminal strip, right? Okay. Then each vehicle will have, uh, will have its wires here, one wire here, one wire there. Mm -hmm. And I found that um, I, you can't do the whole railroad. This just, not, this doesn't provide enough amperage, I guess is the word. So I can do 10 or 12 vehicles, which will have, let's say, 20 to 30 bulbs mm -hmm. and still have the whole the whole scene, the whole area. So that area that you saw flushing is one of these, one of these power supplies. Okay. Uh, one of these is on flushing, right? Another one is under um, let's go back to the... okay. So here, this whole area here, 
it's called Sophia. That other one is called Skylar. There's one power supply that covers all of these vehicles. Um, I'll see if there's a better picture. Like there's one that covers everything in Bethany and Bethany is the, the, uh, the section, uh, one of the first ones I showed. Let's see if I can find that. So this whole area of Bethany, mm -hmm. which goes past to uh, past here to where the chain gang was, that's all powered. Vehicles are all powered by one of those power supplies. Okay. So you can do, uh, you know, maybe forty actual bulbs and still get plenty of brightness out of them. So I've got one under here. I've got I've got, I've got about six of them throughout the railroad, and I screw them to the underside of the turn to, on the side of the layout. If there's a problem, I can just unscrew them and you know uh, troubleshoot them. But uh, I've had these in about eight years. Started making them about eight years ago, and I haven't had I haven't had one of those things fail yet. Um, and I I still have some areas that are powered by um, the old Radio Shack ones that where I could actually get 1.5 volt ones. Mm -hmm. uh, I tried looking up on the internet for 1.5 volt power supplies and they just, they just weren't reliable. I sent away for one and it put out three volts and there was no adjusting it. And they even sent away for a kit for a 1.5 volt power supply and it gave me 2.6 volts. So I, I was kind of frustrated going, you know, that, and so I went on the internet and I found this circuit and uh, I, I don't do this kind of thing. I really don't, I don't make my own circuit boards or anything like that. I said, what the heck, I'd try it. And I think this first one didn't work. The second one worked. And after that, I, I figured out, first figured out that they were polarity dependent, right? You build the whole thing and then you click the, connect the wires from your wall board and nothing works. And then you realize you got to swap the wires from your wall board. So, um, so that, that's where I am now. And, the, uh, you know, once in a while I'll find uh, I'll look around the railroad and there's a, a vehicle with uh, a bulb burned out. I think the bulb's burned out. So I just pick it up. I jiggle it a little bit. And most times they come on, which to me is it, there's, a, a, in, there's something wrong with my wiring or there's something wrong with the, the, the bulbs are so tiny that there might be a loose connection in the bulb itself. Mm -hmm. And so I say nine times out of 10, I jiggle the vehicle and the lights come back on. <clears throat> but it's important before you do this, that you figure out where you want that vehicle because you're gonna drill a hole in your layout for it. Mm -hmm. And like I said, if you just wanna do a few, you don't have to go through, just put it, put it, uh, hook it up to a battery holder and you know, take, try a battery. I think a, I think a, a, a double A battery will do at least three or four cars. Um, but then you gotta to remember to turn it off. Okay, one of the things I like about this is my railroad has a separate AC circuit just for um, scenery. I have a circuit just for the track. I have a circuit just for scenery effects. And I have a circuit just for um, uh, shop like uh, vacuums and stuff. So I can turn, go to the wall uh, and turn off one switch and it turns off the whole scenery circuit. Because I've got these wall warts plugged in all over the layout. Mm -hmm. So if I can turn all the scenery off at one time, buildings, vehicles, any moving animations, they all go off at one time and you, you don't need them except maybe for an open house. Usually when you have an operating session, the yeah, guys aren't that interested in that, that the lights work, you know, mostly it's for visitors. Um, but I, when I just built the railroad, like I said, it was a brand new house. So I was able to run three separate um, circuits underneath the railroad. And they label to plug your scenery in here. And if you ever looked under my railroad, you'd maze that I must have a hundred wall warts plugged in. Mm -hmm. All right. My next question is on the bulbs. Um, is there a certain color? And do you ever have to worry about the bulbs uh, melting out of lens? Never had one. I never had one melt because I'm very careful that I don't put in more than 1.5 volts because they'll burn out. Mm -hmm. um, and they do make these, these, um, let's see if I come back to that. So here's your circuitron 
uh, voltage. I, I didn't take a picture of the, there's a circuitron bag with the bulbs and they make, they make clear, they make red. I don't know if they, they may make other colors too, if you want to do like a Christmas tree or something, but um, you get a package. They're not that expensive. You get, I think you can get 24 bulbs for $29. And I'm talking about retail. Um, I used to I try and buy them from my local hobby shop, which is Rail Tales in Charlottesville, but not a pe not, not a lot of people are dealing with this these tiny bulbs. So sometimes I have to send away for them. I send away to Circuitron. I think retail at thirty dollars for for twenty four of them. Um, but when you think about it, now you can light up a vehicle for basically two bucks. Mm -hmm. The the build the uh, scenic Woodland Scenics is making lighted vehicles, and I think they're re they retail about thirty dollars each, which is nice, and they're, they're easy. But I've got a hundred lights, a hundred vehicles with lights, so thirty bucks a piece would be three thousand dollars. You know, no, I'm not going to do that. So that's that's why that's why I've been doing this. Okay. Um... <clears throat> And then is, do these light bulbs come in different colors? Yes. And what Clear color you... and red that I know of, they may also come in, in other colors. No, I mean on the, uh, not on the red ones. I'm talking about, do they have like a, a white, white or a yellowish, uh, white, you know, type different colors like that? That I don't know. Okay. That was all the questions I had. Okay. If there's anything else. And George, the shaking of the vehicle to get the light to come back on sounds like faith healing. <laughs> um, no, they, you, you test them out first with a battery. And before you go through all the trouble of you know, drilling a hole in your layout, you test them with a battery, you jiggle them a little bit to make sure that you're, everything's okay. And um, now, the big, one of the big problems, not a big problem, if you have kids come over and they say, oh, wow, look at this, they pick it up, right? And they're pulling up the wires. So we, I've learned to leave a lot of slack. So the kid picks up the wire, vehicle and which hopefully he realizes there's a bunch of wires attached and he doesn't break it off. If he does, you know, it's no big deal. You go on, you go on to the layout and you repair it. No, no, no. You need to uh, to connect the, the vehicle by uh, shell to 110 so as to encourage them not to touch it. <laughs> nah. <laughs> In okay. any case, magnificent presentation. Thanks a heap. Okay, if you guys want, if anybody wants to email me, I can email you the whole thing um or i can share it actually i can share the presentation if you email me with your email address okay and i didn't put it on here but my email is g gauge g g a i g e 418 at gmail oh when i'm gonna i see something somebody said something on the chat can I open the chat? I can't open the chat. Okay, I guess this, I guess the questions are gone. Oh, thank you for your attention, gentlemen. I hope I've encouraged you enough to try this. It's it's really rewarding, and don't be discouraged if the first one sucks. Yeah, you know, <laughs> that happens. You know. Well, George, thank you for uh, the clinic on from the uh, the board of directors. We appreciate that. Uh, if you could send your presentation to me, I can uh, put it up on our website over in our clinic area. Uh, if you can put it, put it in, a, in a PDF format uh, and just email it to me, that would work fine. And uh, we will uh, 